All right, so to unwrap this chair, uh, or part of this chair, we're going to add the unwrap modifier. And I have these buttons here because these are the ones that I use the most, and I set this up for myself. And if you would like something like this, you can do this too. Um, if you're at a machine where it doesn't get reset and stuff like this, then it will stay here. Uh, the button to get this sort of thing going is right here. And you can click on this and click on uh, modifier or configure modifier sets. Over here I have set my total buttons to 8. If I said 10, you see I have two more buttons here. And the way you can put what you like here, uh, you notice all of these uh, modifiers in here are also when we go here to this modifier list. So let's say I wanted a bevel. I could drag this bevel over and there it is. And if I didn't want that bevel, I could put it back. So that's kind of how that works. I'm going to turn this back to 8. Um, actually, I could just cancel. So that's how you have these buttons. Now once you make the buttons, then you need to click on show the buttons. So if I didn't have show the buttons, just because they're there, right? So that's how that is. Okay, so we're going to unwrap. So I'm adding the unwrap EV modifier. And you can see that we have this green seam on this front part of this leg. It's all left over from that box we drew. And this one is the same way because it is a direct copy of this box we drew. And you can see that the parts that we extruded do not have these seams. So we are going to have to break this thing apart. Now if I open up the UV modifier and all right, we're in polygons, so if I select the whole thing, I'm just going to say Control A to make sure that all of the polygons are selected. And you can see that it really doesn't make any sense over here. I'm going to click on this flatten, and it's going to just take all these pieces and flatten them straight out. And it's, it's also going to fit them all inside this zero to one space, which is handy for a quick, you know, throw it down. The problem here, though, is that none of these pieces are parallel and perpendicular to uh, the way that the grain of wood would go if we had just a single image and we wanted to place these all to go in the same direction as the grain. So, so this is kind of a mess if we wanted to do it that way. So we're going to have to break this apart and sew it back together. And so this is just the way I do it. There are several ways to do all of these things. Um, what I'm doing right now is just trying to show you the most efficient way, I think, uh, to get it done, right? So I'm going to select the edge tool here. And the way this works is wherever it's green, that means it's a seam or it, it's not, you know, attached to anything. So it's its own UV piece. Um, maybe I should explain a UV. A UV is when you take a 3D object and you unwrap it to be a flat... 2D takes up 2D space so that you can paint on it. So think of a box, I don't know, like say a box of raisins, right? Maybe you're done with that and you unwrap it and you have, you can see how you unwrap it flat and how they might cut it to fold it to be a box. So that's sort of what we're doing is, is we've, we have this chair and we're going to un, we're going to put it back together. We don't want all these seams. We kind of want it to look like it's all one piece of wood. So um, we will strategically place our seams to be sort of on the lower and inside portion of this chair. Remember, we're going to copy this over. So this is basically the inside part. So having the seam right along this edge would be beneficial. You wouldn't really notice it if these were all connected. So the way this is going to work, I'm just going to get this a little more side by side. Um, I'm going to click on the side so I have more access to where I want the seams. I'll just kind of go like this. I'm going to pick one side and and start there. So I know that the wood grain is going to go along this way. It's going to go this way. Like this would be a seam, right? Oops. Control W or Control Z that. This, this one, the seam would be here on either side, right? This is just one piece of wood going this way. 
this one and this one. And the way we can go about unwrapping this is, or uh, un, um, creating these as a seam, breaking them, is this one where we could break it, right? And now you can see they're all green, which means they're a seam. The other way is, I have to do these two. So I'm going to click on that. I'm holding control. This. If you're unable to select one at a time, you might have accidentally put this box clicked on. And if that's the case, you can see if I click on it, it selects the whole element. So let me undo that and undo this box. The other way to do it is to, to right click in here and say break. So now I've broken all those. Okay, I'm going to basically, I'm going to grab this element now and see how this works. So I'm going to grab the polygons and I'm in the move. I'm going to just take one side of these this chair like this. Oh, there's one more I have to break that uh, isn't as apparent to break as you might think. So it's this one right here. Let's get our edge tool here. And it's this seam right here. This one needs to be broken. It's already broken there, here, and here. But it is not broken here. So I'm going to break that. Okay. So this is our rotate tool. So I'm going to grab this. I'm in the element. So I can grab this. And I know the wood grain. I'm going to have my wood grain going up and down in terms of a an image. So I'm going to line these things up to be up and down. And these are going to be the the starting point for us to unwrap or to sew back. Does it really matter if it's upside down or not? Uh, because I think I need this piece. No, that'll those will get sewn. Okay, so the way this works is I'll just start with this one. I'm gonna not be in this uh, element mode. I'm just gonna kind of click back and forth. Sometimes it gets stuck. Like if you can't move stuff, just sort of click back and forth. It's got a little uh, warped business about itself. Okay, so. I think this inside piece here is a good place to have a seam. So I'm going to double click on this and to sew the next piece on, uh, if we see here this is red and this is blue here, that means that this red, this is the corresponding edge to this. So if I sew it, this is the sew that we want. We want the have it be blue to blue, like they're both facing towards us faces. Uh, more on that later. You'll get it. Um, there's a lot to this, so just trust me, you want to click on this blue and blue. So I'm going to double click on this one now and do the same thing. Ah, so we need to break this right here. So I'm going to break because that uh, there. Those places we need to break. I get the element here and just drag these away. Okay, back to not element and edges. So I'll double click on this and so, all right, another one we have to break. So I'm gonna click on that and break it. Uh, yes. Everything else is broken here. I thought it broke those, okay. Everything else is fine, it looks like. So again, I will click on this element, move this, oops, click it and move it aside. All right, let's try this again. Edges, not element. I'm just going to click on one and so because it is right here where this piece comes out. So you'll notice this one is this seam and I will sew that. Okay, so now it's white, so it's not a seam. This hole right here, this is where that arm here comes out. So I'm not going to worry about that. The seam is there, I think. I might want the seam here. Okay, so if I double click on this and break it, 
then I can click on this and sew it and click on this one and sew it. So now the hole is in the middle and that's fine. So now the seam is in the back. And for this one, I would probably do the same thing. I'm gonna sew this one. Where is this? Let's work on this one. So I will sew that. Uh, I want this edge, yes. Sew that and sew that. Okay, so that's all four sides. Went all the way around. The seam is right here at the bottom. This one I want the seam here. Okay, so we'll leave that one open on this, sew it, click on this to be sure, holding control, this one, and here. All right, see how that is. Okay, so this has gone all the way around, and this hole right here is that. That seam is in the back. And this one, let's sew here. Let's see what this one is. So I'm going to double click on that and sew it. Double click that, sew it, double click, sew. Ah, uh, need to break this. This is this is really what it is. This is what the whole unwrapping process is. You know, let's set that aside. And you can see our pieces are starting to diminish. We're, we'll work on. Uh, Let's get this one done. I'm going to click once on there because I know this one's now going to be the whole. Each one has its little po part. Right, and these are all going to go here. So I'm going to, um, that's this one. And I think I would want the seam this right here. So I will click on this side and sew it. I'm going to click on that and sew this and this. And double click that and so oops this one has two holes here and here it's got one on this side and one on this side right so uh, all right so there's a seam right that one it's all going right so we have our seam you can't you can't not have a seam it's just strategic planning really okay and now these little pieces here are all the floor, you know, the end pieces, this one, this one, and this one. So th these, if we were to have the wood grain going this way, these would be the ends of the wood grain, right? So we would have to have another texture for this. When you're finished with all of these, I'm going to kind of get them near each other. So you don't want them right on each other, right? You want to kind of Get them close. These these are sharing a similar texture, so it's not horrible. Other times you're going to want them a little bit more. Why is this? Is it snapping? It's being. Come on now. Oh. There we go. Later when you have your texture classes or text when you look at the texture things, you'll notice how what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab the element, you'll see how this works. So I can grab the whole don't double click on it. Too fast. Put this more like this. And I'm gonna rotate. These are little um quick little rotate things. I'm going to put those here. Actually, I think I will leave them like this. All right, so this is the zero to one space here. When you're done with everything, it all needs to fit into the zero to one space. This is super important for game engine things. We also don't want to overlap them. So when we do duplicate this in a moment here, and we undo this UVs, I'll show you what to do with the offset. Okay, so the la lastly what we want to do is we want to make sure that the checkers are all not warped and stretched and all that sort of thing. And one of the quickest ways that I like to uh, go ahead and fix this is I go to tools and relax. Um, if we're in polygons, I'll grab polygons, we can grab the whole group and relax by polygon, start, relax, 
and you can see it kind of shifted a little bit there. Um, you don't even really have to say apply, it just is that way. And it just sort of relaxes it to the normal state of how it would be, okay? Because when we initially uh, unwrap it and stitch it and all this, some of these pieces got a little stretched and so this is just a good way to make sure that it is not stretched. So any texture we put on here, it won't be warped, essentially is what, what we're ensuring here. I'm going to leave it this size. I could make it a little bit bigger, I suppose. This button um, is kind of the pivot point of where it would move things. So at this point, you can see the pivot points here. I think I'll move them a little bit closer to this. Then when I get my scale tool, you'll see it's scaling from that. I'm, I'm going to move these things a little closer. I think they can be packed. We call this packing UVs when we uh, place them into the zero to one space to be most efficient. Um, our, our pixels are, are sacred. <laughs> you know, we, we want to disperse them equally, but we also want to make sure that nobody gets more than another, right? So they're all roughly the same size. Um, a good way to see this is up here, this checker pattern. Uh, again, I have to kind of check in and out of it if you want the actual checkers here on the chair. And we can't really see the checkers here, so let me uh, make this big for a second. So if we make this really big, that puts more pixels in this area. Consider all of these squares like a pixel, so right? If I make these bigger, more pixels got in there, right? So here we have these little squares. Um, and we can see that they're roughly square-ish, and that is what we want. If I were to say, purposefully make this wrong, right? Let's say it's stretched this way. You can see that these are not square. I'm going to undo that. We want them to be square. That is going to ensure, I'm going to undo this a few times just to put them back in here. Um, that's going to ensure that if, if, these ch if these checkers show up square and checker here, then whatever map we put in here will show correctly here is basically what that is. So these checkers don't have to line up or anything. They just have to be square. That's all they have to do. Well, the other thing they have to do is be roughly the same size. That means that we're not giving anybody any more pixels than another, that they're all going to be about the same resolution. All right, so we have this chair unwrapped. And before we move on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this information into the chair. I'm going to go ahead and close this. So we know that this chair has been unwrapped. Here it is. And I'm going to right click on it and collapse all. Yes. It says as an editable poly, if yours turns to an editable mesh, just turn it back into an editable poly. And um, and then the next thing we're going to do is uh, copy this chair over and continue with modeling the chair.